Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining. Uh, my name is uh, Inji Gadala. I am your SOLIDWORKS PCB specialist. So um, just um, allow me very quickly to introduce myself and background. Um, I have about 15 years, over 15 years of hardware design experience in many different industries, uh, medical industry, consumer electronics, and uh, clean power technology. I've spent five years at Altium about 10 years ago, and I've been using Altium for over 12 years. Um, why me? Why SOLIDWORKS PCB? Um, this, we'll talk about it today. That's the whole purpose of the seminar. What is SOLIDWORKS doing in the electronics domain? So why PCB is important? And uh, I'm sure that you know, you guys come with a mechanical background. You know that when you look at the product or even the electronic background, when we look at a PCB, I cannot just go and buy PCB. If I go to Best Buy, if I go to Radio Shack, if I go to, um, you know, any electronics shop, I cannot just buy a PCB. There is a product. And we found out that there are the different silos um, which are the mechanical and the electrical, and we try to bridge the gap between the electrical and the mechanical teams. So we're here because we're talking about our solution to help the engineering community uh, to better collaborate. So the solution that you will see, it's not a new technology. It's, um, we've partnered with Altium uh, company, so SOLIDWORKS now and Altium, their partner, in creating the technology that we call the collaboration technology. In addition to that, we have our own SOLIDWORKS PCB platform, which again, we're going to talk about it. And it's a complete platform that will allow electrical engineers to capture their design intent from the schematic all the way to manufacturing. When we look at the design technology and the complexity for just a little bit of, you know, background for the mechanical people. Nowadays, when we look at the PCB, it's um, high speed, right? We're talking about more layers, high speed, high density. We're talking about higher pin counts. So components, what used to be 10 pins, now you have those BGA, you have SOICs, you have complex or more, you know, I've, I've dealt with a FPG that, that, that was 1,158 pins. So something that would mimic, you know, an ASIC when I worked at an ASIC, co an ASIC company. Um, something that we challenge, if we look around this room, devices and products are only getting smaller with exception to some, you know, um, application, but things are not getting larger. Things are getting smaller. We can look at again with the exception to for example a PC but you know your computer personal laptop your iPhone your let's say your phone uh, don't want to put any branding but you know I, I always look at the iPhone I'm like it's just more than a, a phone it's a GPS it's a radio it's you know my calendar my, you know keeps up my uh, employment duties my mother duties everything all in one that I can track you know everything from a single device we can look at this device, the phone, if you look at your phone as a device, it's definitely not getting any larger, components are getting smaller, the um, spacing at, in the board is becoming smaller, and unfortunately, and I'm going to say this unfortunately from the electronic point of view, because I'm in electrical design, the mechanical, they get to define the space for us. So we're always challenged by trying to make sure that all the electronic will fit into what the mechanical has defined for us. So that's a huge challenge. For, I'm like, at the end of the day, you know, the feel, the look, the touch comes from the mechanical, and then they hand this over to the electrical person and say, make it fit, make it work. Increasing density, we know that. We talked about it. I'm like, if you look at your phone, for example, you have, what, seven, eight, you know, primary components or elements that are the brain, you know, the memory that do the job and those definitely are, you know, um, increasing, you know, smaller in size, they're increasing their functionality and again, the board are becoming or the product is actually becoming smaller. 
I remember we used to work with constraint early back like 15 years ago. It's like, oh, I'm going to design to the constraint. Now you have tools that you can sit and define those constraints. They're definitely not becoming any easier. If not, they're only becoming more complex. So there are, you know, software platforms, you know, like for a PCB designer, I'm sure that exists on the mechanical side too, but for a PCB, my design rules are a very critical path of my PCB development. I spend hours and hours making sure that I, Im you know, I input all the design rules that will allow me to um, obey to the clearance, to the uh, width, to the match length, you know, impedance, and so forth. That's just maybe one piece. And then take that aside. You have the SI, you have the simulation, you have quality of your signal. So a lot of we're really driven by a lot of design constraints and they're only getting more complex. Again, new standards and compliance come up every single day, right? We have to obey IEC standards. We have to obey ISO like so many standards and they keep changing as the technology changes too. And we have to make sure that we comply to all of those standards. Not just that, the tool that we use help us to be compliant with those standards. So for example, when I generate, when I work with a PCB, in order to fabricate the board, we generate Gerbers. And um, Gerbers, they have to also follow the standards. So there are now the IPC 2581. They're the latest standards trying to bring, you know, some of those Gerbers films and also incorporate the net list so every you know everything is just portable in one file so these are evolving and you also want to make sure that your tool is evolving to actually adopt those new compliances and standards so at the end of the day we're creating a product I'm not here at, like I said I'm here to talk about PCB but it's not going to be your traditional I'm going to show you how we can do a good layer stack or I'm going to show you how we can run an SI tool. I'm going to show you why we're in that space, why SOLIDWORKS decided to partner with Altium and what are the solution we're offering today. Um, the first solution which is very different than anybody exists today in the market is the collaboration. The way we collaborate between electrical and the mechanical that I can say with a lot of confidence that we are the first one adopting a seamless collaboration between SOLIDWORKS and all team designer or SOLIDWORKS and our also PCB platform which we call SOLIDWORKS PCB. So we focused on the ECAD MCAD methodology. That's like I said, this is how we're so different from anybody in this market. So. I thought that I'm going to have more audiences. Maybe they're all online, but, you know, yeah, that's right. But at least, you know, so I'm going to pick on those who are in front of me. So I'm going to ask you a question. For those who has done, you know, electrical and mechanical, did your ECAD MCAD ever let you down? Yes? No? Yeah. Okay. So I think we know the answer. And I... I've been working for SOLIDWORKS. Um, it's been about a year and a half since they adopted this, since they had the agreement with Altium, and I'm here to support this. So I've talked to a lot of customers. We've run a lot of surveys. 93% of customers that I talk to, they say it's painful or it could be better. So did it ever let you down? Absolutely. It let me down, you know, when I did hardware design. Um, missing projects and budget. These are significant items for any organization. Wasted time. When I talk about wasted time, think about it. Do we ever talk about, oh, how early we're going to be? When we start, we always talk about how late we're going to I'm going to, when I put the time, you know, with pro program manager working on a schedule, he always makes sure that he has a buffer or she has a buffer right? You never really shave. It's like, okay, we're going to try to hit that timeline, but really we're going to add a couple of weeks and then it may be a couple of months. It's always a buffer. So there will always be, you know, wasted time and some productivity because the tool is not helping or the communication between the teams. Unreliable communication, not just between, I'm not talking about individuals. I'm not talking about, you know, communication between, you know, 
the mechanical or the electrical. I'm talking about the disciplines. There is a true disconnect right now between the electrical and the mechanical. We call them silos, right? I'm working in my own environment. He's or she working in her own environment. I just, you know what, we collaborate through um, emails, sticky notes. If we have the luxury, the company has the luxury to have all the teams in one place, which is very unusual now. Uh, yeah, I'm going to catch somebody in the hall and talk to them about, you know, a board outline or a dimension or what did they mean when they send this drawing. Um, there's no communication. I'm going to ask you a question. Since when? Gmail became part of our workflow. If I take Gmail today, just for one day, in the middle of your design cycle, what would happen? Everybody would freak. We rely so much on our email that it's becoming part of our workflow. As an electrical, I'm expecting an email from mechanical to inform me is the DXF ready. He's going to send me a DXF through an email or he's going to inform me through an email where the DXF is so I can go ahead and grab it. When I'm done, I'm going to generate a step file and I'm going to email it to him, either email him the file or email him to inform him that the file is put on a network so he can go ahead and grab so he can validate and bring it into the enclosure and make sure that it fits. Everything is communicated through Gmail. It's part of our workflow. But it shouldn't. It's mean of communication, but it shouldn't be the means of communication between engineering team. Misunderstood intent happens all the time. We throw things. There is a wall between electrical and mechanical. We throw things, you know, through the wall, and we hope that it's going to get right or somebody, you know, the outcome will be correct or this is going to be the stuff that we intended to design. How many times you know, you receive something, and then you say, is that metric or imperial? What are the units? What are the scaling? Something even as simple as this. I'm not going to talk about, you know, reading dimensions, but I would look at a drawing, and I'm like, if I don't, if this is the first time I look at a drawing, I do not know the scale. I do not know what units are. And I scratch my head, and I pick up the phone, like, is that metric, imperial? So, again, we don't have a means of communicating those design intent correctly. So we've done a lot of research, we've, done, we've talked to our community, and then we found that this is what they want from us. When we talked to the electrical and the mechanical people, this is what they want. They said, I want to reduce and or eliminate any issues due to form, fit, and function, uh, form and fit for prototypes. Throughout the development cycle, we know there's a lot of issues, but I can say the form and fit definitely are those who rises to the top. They want 100%, 100% design representation between the electrical and mechanical. I don't want any guesses. I don't want any surprises. I don't want somebody to say, oh, it should work, or it should. And I'm like, we want to take this out of the equation. And when we collaborate between the different disciplines or between electrical and mechanical, we want to minimize ECOs. In a perfect world, there should be no ECOs, but even if there is an ECO, we want means to track those ECOs and to go back to history and review who did what. And also to easily share and communicate those design intent. I don't want to be, I don't want to guess. I don't have time to guess, right? I'm like everybody, everybody here in this room, they say, I want my time back. Fun part of what I, my, my job is when I design, when I'm innovative. The part that it sucks when I have to do all that paperwork or, you know, try to understand something or pick up the phone and talk to somebody. So today, we offer a solution. We offer two solutions for you. We're offering, when we partner with Altim as a company, we created the collaboration technology. The collaboration technology allows for a seamless collaboration between the electrical and the mechanical teams. The one restriction is because it's a SOLIDWORKS company and it's all team designer, so you must possess SOLIDWORKS as your MCAT tool and all team designer or SOLIDWORKS PCB as your ECAT tool. So today the focus of this demonstration or the seminar, I'm going to show you the collaboration technology and what we offer. 
Currently, it's available for all team designer, those who possess all team designer licenses, and also we have our own SolidWorks PCB platform. SolidWorks PCB platform is a complete standalone platform that will allow you to do electronic design, capturing your schematic all the way to generating your manufacture and fabrication outputs. And we're also going to take a look at the SolidWorks PCB platform. I talked to Lars and I said I would highly recommend to have both audiences for the first session, you know, for the first hour because I'm going to show that collaboration technology between SOLIDWORKS and Altium Designer. And then the same collaboration exists for SOLIDWORKS PCB which will be the second half of that seminar and will fo the focus will be on our SOLIDWORKS PCB platform and show you how the platform looks and what we've done and where we're taking this platform, you know, as we evolve, you know, what we're doing and where, where we're going with the, our own. It's not own, it's still an all team DNA um, for those who are, um, any audiences mechanical? All mechanical? So anybody on the call that are electrical? Okay. <laughs> Okay, very good. So for those who are um, electrical, then we'll go ahead and talk about the SOLIDWORKS PCB platform, which is a purely electrical standalone platform. I've been doing hardware design for many years. So I came with what I think is an appropriate workflow for PCB design. I'm not going to bore you with this. This is just a simple highlight of the different steps throughout the PCB development. The first thing that we always start, before I even start any of my hardware, you know, concept proofing, how big is my board, right? I need to know where my components, am I, is it single side? I can start with design, yes, when I, when I do concept proofing, when we take a, a project and there are new circuitry that I'm going to start designing, I don't care what I use. The board can be 10 by 10, it can be 4 by 4, whatever. You know, I can even use a breadboard. Doesn't matter. I just want to make sure first my hardware is going to work. Once my hardware works, then I have all the constraints that we talked about. First thing I need to know, I need to know how big is my board. The, the LCD that I selected, all the components, I, do I need to go smaller? Do I need connectors? We know they're pain. I know for a fact. I've designed boards where I had to switch connectors because they were not available or because we're going smaller pitch. Do you guys use ZIF connectors? Yeah? They're expensive. Very, but they are for, um, came for the medical industry. Smaller portable devices to read, you know, to help with nerve and muscle stim. Portable, we had to switch to ZIF. They're so pricey. So things that I had, and I'm like, oh my gosh, do I have the real? Yes, they're small, fine pitch, but they're going to cost for, you know, assembly. The part is expensive. A lot of things. But we need to start. The first step is we need to start with electromechanical collaboration. If you look at this workflow from one through five, so electromechanical collaboration, component research, schematic capture, PCB design, and deliverables. In the past, we used to call these islands of automation. When you look at these, four out of five, they can be done simultaneously today. Except for deliverables, I cannot fabricate and manufacture my board until the whole thing is completed. But if those are four different people, you have a PCB designer, you have a dedicated PCB layout, you have a component librarian, you know, those can be all working simultaneously. And we want to make sure that they're all synchronized. They're all sharing design intent. And add to that the complexity when it comes where the mechanical, you know, comes along to. Because now we have to make sure that the board will fit inside an enclosure. So this is all, you know, pretty much that. That's the journey I'm going to take you today. So my whole demonstration or the seminar is going to be talking about each of those. And the primary focus for you, since I have mostly mechanical, we're going to start with the electromechanical collaboration. I've done hundreds of demos, and they're always great. The great, you know, show rate, but for me, impact comes with a real-life application of our solution. 
I'm gonna play a 40 second video for from our friend Vince Vince is a very strong gentleman he was um, he got an, into an accident and he lost the mobility to his left arm there's a product called Myomo my own motion this device help him to gain back his mobility so he can use his arm and he can play with his grandkids. It's a very powerful video, but I want to share with you because we're going to take the MIMO device and I'm going to show you how we were able to get that product to our, to Vince and others using our own tools. The, the hand device, I'm able to ha ha hold on to something and be able to cut, for instance, cucumbers, cut, slice them up that way. And also, every night before I go to bed, I like to have a yogurt. And that's normally when I have the, uh, the Myra Pro, Pro on, so I can get a, a container of yogurt out of the refrigerator and hold it in the, in the Myra Pro fingers, and I'm able to peel off the top of it and then you, with a spoon, I'm able to eat the rest of the yogurt. When you have a stroke, it's devastating. Well, to me, it was devastating. With continued use of the Maya Pro, I'm sure by next summer again, there's a lot more things I'll be able to do, especially with my grandkids. It's amazing. Vince never ceased to impress me. Um, this device really changed his outlook. Gives him back his mobility. He can play very strong person. He never gave up and let him, you know, go back to his normal, you know, things that you and I take for granted. For him, it's like, yeah, I can get back to my life and I can enjoy life again. Okay, very good. Thank you. So that's the device um, Vince is wearing, was wearing. It actually was all done in SolidWorks and SolidWorks PCB using our collaboration technology. So what, we, what happens is that when we look today, when we look at any cross-domain collaboration, the challenge comes with interchange format. So I've asked Lars, I'm like, how do you guys communicate? How do electrical and mechanical communicate today? Can somebody volunteer and tell me? Um, looking at this device, you guys know that there will be a PCB sitting somewhere pretty much draw a sketch and then how do you communicate the design intent for the sketch that represent the PCB with dimensions to your electronic or electrical counterpart? TXF? Drawing? PDF? Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what he said, exactly. He said it's a DXF and, um, you know, primarily the electrical user um, have all team designers, so they will get the DXF and then they will add components and then they will export the step and then toss it back over to the mechanical. There's a problem. Immediately for us, we know. First of all, for, it's a static representation of the moment of that design. When I sit and as a mechanical, I create a DXF and I send it, and then I make a change, there are no dynamics updates, right? I'm like, it's like as if I'm taking a picture, right? I'm like, here's a picture, snapshot, and then here's the email that I'm going to document that that day I send this outline, and then what do the electrical person does? He has to import this DXF. Then we have to work on origin, we have to work on defining, because the DXF comes in as a board outline. We have to redefine the board shape from the board outline. We have to set the origin. We have to work with dimensions. We have to work, make sure that it's the not scale. So we have to work with the right units. We have this is all trial and error, by the way. Exactly. All of this when I import the DXF because I do not know how it was created. And again, the mechanical, the most important thing for you guys, you manipulate your data. You even say, I wish it was even a snapshot of the moment of the design sending the sketch. You don't even do that. You have to export that as a DXF. 
So you already manipulate your current data to bring it and massage it to bring it over to the electrical person so you can work with it. And even for the electrical, it's not an ideal work. <laughs> they still have to bring it in. They have to redefine, adjust it, and make sure that they have the right dimensions. They add the mounting holes, and then perfect. It changed. Okay. Mechanical decide they need to because something changes in the enclosure, whatever. They need to either expand, reduce, add a mounting hole, another change. How do you communicate that? You guys have your own version and control system. They have their version and control system. So think of it as a black box. I don't care, and I'm excuse my term, I don't care about what goes in the mechanic. I care about what goes in my word, right? I'm like, when I receive the second DXF, it's a black box for me. I bring it in, I have to revise it, give it my own nomenclature, right, the naming convention that it fits when in my history so I can track it and make sure that I'm, you know, looking at the most recent one. God forbid if you go on vacation or you get sick in the middle of that process. You can't. You're married to the project. Nobody can leave because it's very critical. We're communicating. You say communicating, but we're not really communicating. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how we can use what's the seamless collaboration tool. We're going to start from the SOLIDWORKS mechanical side. I've already created a sketch, this sketch here. Right there, and I hope that you guys see it. The sketch here represents the PCB. So this is the sketch of the board that line where it's going to represent the PCB. Today, with our collaboration technology, we allow the mechanical to create an assembly that it's automatically linked to the PCB. So I'm not talking about DXF. I'm not talking about interchange format. I'm not talking about any of those translation tools. We're talking about an intelligent backend system that will allow for the mechanical without compromising your workflow to dynamically and automatically link to the PCB in the electronic domain. This is the panel that allows for the collaboration, and the same exact panel exists right now in all Team Designer or SOLIDWORKS PCB. So there's only one step that we're going to do differently. In order for me to collaborate, so I'm going to work within an assembly. So again, I'm not compromising your workflow. What I'm going to do, I am going to create a new board assembly. All I'm going to do, I'm going to get this, you know, nice window that it's letting me create a project. That project is the representation of the PCB in the electronic domain. So I'm going to go ahead and name this GX. I'm going to call it MIMO. And I'm going to go ahead. And I don't want to go into, these are all like the repository. There is a server where it keeps all of these projects. It's pretty much if you guys have all Team Designer and you have a vault, makes more sense. They understand that concept of the Altium Vault and server where we keep this project. Everything is in one place and that service allows for the collaboration. Yes? So this all gets, gets stored in our Altium Vault? Uh, if you have an Altium paid vault, yes. If not, we have our own, which we call PCB services for those who do not have an Altium paid vault. Yeah. Well, and again, with Altium paid vault or our SOLIDWORKS PCB services is identical because part of our technology is the Altium Vault. So here, I'm just going to call, this is just a project from the mechanical, and I can do the same exact thing, that same exact process from the electronic side, from Altium Designer or from SOLIDWORKS PCB. So I'm just creating that, level, that project that resides on the server, and once I create it, from this point on, it's going to prompt me to save an assembly. This is your mechanical environment. There are nothing that, I, even until this point, I have not changed your workflow. This is asking me, where do you want to save this assembly, the sub-assembly that it's going to represent the PCB? You guys use PDM or EPDM? Definitely, I have mine here. I can go ahead and save that project into PDM. Excuse me, my assembly. So that's your workflow. I, instead of you creating the sketch by hand, we just use the collaboration panel. What it did automatically, it created a default 10 by 10 board, 
in SOLIDWORKS. And this board here is actually represented in the feature tree with sketch, with planes, and or everything as you would normally do in your mechanical domain. What I need to do now is I need to redefine this board outline. Remember, this sub-assembly here is linked to the PCB and the electronic domain. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to redefine the board outline. And usually how I do that, I like to do it in the context of the main assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and insert. And you guys tell me, I think this would be straightforward for you. This is just, I'm bringing in the sub-assembly into my main assembly. And I'm going to create just simple mating commands here to align. Okay. Perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that sketch that I created to redefine my board outline. So I use the convert entities and then now I have that representation of the new sketch according to the one I created in the main assembly. The beauty of SOLIDWORKS connectivity or associativity file that the sketch that I just redefined it will dynamically update that into that subassembly. So back to the subassembly just looking at the PCB I can see that I already adopted the new board outline. This is where you generate the DX set and then you add the notes and then you export it out to the electrical person. Here's what we're going to do. I am done, at least for now. This is going to be the board or the PCB that I need to communicate to my electronic team. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the collaboration panel. Every single mechanical user who wish to collaborate to the electrical team have their own credentials. That's part of that services or the vault that we were talking about because we can track who did what and when. That's one thing when we talked earlier is like, I do not, you are married to the project or you receive your X mechanical and Y electrical, you guys are both assigned and you communicate, nobody can get in because they don't know the revision or whatever. It's no longer the case. Anybody can collaborate. Every single user will have their own credentials to collaborate. We, by the way, this is part of the setup. We have, you know, best practices on how we set up the vault, who get access. We have control on who access which project. So this is all permissions and rights that we set up. We can assign that by roles, by teams, by groups, by user, and give permission who gets to collaborate and who gets to make changes. As much as it's a free, you know, nice space, but we can put boundaries to who gets to collaborate. Yes? Yes, yes we're going to talk about this later. This is just the first step, yes. Yep. So now what we're going to do, we, I'm going to go inform, hello, this is the board that line. And I'm just going to post. Notice that because I'm signed in, in the it just says by me, but the mechanical will see, you know, the right appropriate, you know, the name of who, get, who signed in. So it already posts the date and time. I'm going to switch hats right now, and I'm going to use the all team designer. The same exact things works with our SOLIDWORKS PCB, but because Lars said the majority of the audiences from the electrical side are all team designer users, so we're going to show it with all team designer platform. So now I'm going to put my electrical hat on. And as an Altium designer, there's a project that was created. So what I'm going to do, this is the one step different than what they do, is that now they're going to go and open that project because remember what I said, when we created that project, it already created a link to a PCB. So I'm going to go ahead and browse the project. I don't need to recreate it. Here's a list of all the projects that I'm collaborating. So it's GX MIMO. I'm going to go ahead and open that one. <coughs> and what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and add the schematic, again, from, for the electrical user, that's their workflow. They have a project, and all team, it's the container, possesses the source document, schematic PCB, manufacturer, everything. I'm going to go ahead and add also my PCB. 
I'm going to save all my files. Again, if they use um, version control, they have a, their own repository. We can use that to save the projects, the source documents. If they save it to PDM, we can just save it into whatever you know workflow they use. We don't compromise that workflow. I'm going to go ahead and save my schematic and my PCB. And then now the beauty is comes with the collaboration. The power of integration comes with this collaboration panel. The same exact collaboration panel exists in SolidWorks. When we, that's exactly what we use to push and pull. No more surprises or guesses on how this board outline looks or the time. It's literally a click of a button and I can preview and I can accept or reject those changes. Not only that, I can see who made the change. On the SolidWorks side, I was signed in as John MCAT, created you know, a username for myself called John MCAT. So hello, this is the board outline. Remember what we said about the DXF? I had to make sure like scaling is right, the units are right, it's a trial and error. Not anymore. If I highlight the change, I get to see a preview of the board. And now accepting this board because I know the mechanical define it. Boom. I didn't have to worry. This is literally a click of a button. I did not have to comment, talk, or know what the mechanical did or import. If he makes a change to this outline, I'm going to get a notification. We can add mounting holes. They can reposition mounting holes. This whole thing of mounting holes, of board outline, is all communicated seamlessly between the electrical and the mechanical. Here's where it gets a little bit excited now. I have components. That's some like early design stages. We usually wait until 90% of the components are on the board. And then I create a step and then give it over where the mechanics say, oh, hi, hi, nope, you can't have, I'm like, oh my gosh, why I did not know this. We wait until 90% and then I have to do, they say the 10% of the works is usually the 90% the of the work. That's very true. So it's like, why wait? Even if you, there are what I call them critical parts, and they're not critical because they're the high speed or no, critical because the mechanical that gets to define the placement of those components. So as a team, we decide if marketing is kind of like directing this whole product on how it's going to look. They say, I want these connectors. I want something small, you know, attractive or whatever, you know, they define. Pretty much comes from marketing, how they want the, board, the product to look. And then the mechanical will do the conceptual design, you know, and then after that they toss it to the electrical. But there are some key elements that connectors, LEDs, speakers, volume, you know, USBs, all of this get to be, we agree on the components that we're going to use, and then the mechanical define the placement and lock them down. So as an electrical, right now the collaboration, those electronic components are driven from the electronic site first. So meaning that I have to place this, the PCB footprint and then the footprint will, will have a 3D representation, and then I can bring that over to the mechanical, and then they can reposition. 2018, we've enhanced and we worked on that request from our users. We can place non-electrical parts in the SolidWorks mechanical and push it over to the electrical domain. What I mean by non-electrical, you can place a heat sink. You can place the enclosure. You can pass this information by placing these models, the solid part, in SolidWorks and bring it through the collaboration to the electrical domain. Because again, we're re post 2018, most part in 2019, we're going to start tackling the electronic parts because we're rethinking the way on how we're going to handle a unified part. So the symbol, the footprint, and the model. But right now, the electrical components must be placed first on the electronic side. So what I know is I have a couple of components. I have three connectors that I really care about because these are have, the mechanical has to dictate where they're going because they know the openings and then they know the harness, the cable, how this whole thing is going to be represented in his domain. So what I'm going to do from the, piece, from the electronic side, I'm going to place these three components. So I have a Molex part.
I'm going to re-annotate those as I place. So I give a unique reference designator to each of the components as I place them. Actually, I'm going to get one more. Let's see. Mm -hmm. no, actually, this is good. Just place two components right now. Okay, so I place J1 and J2. These are the two uh, connectors that the mechanical will dictate where they need to be or log down their position. Within our platform, it's a unified platform, all team designer. We will update, go ahead and update through an engineering change order to the PCB. And then now we are going to just simply bring these components inside the board. I have no idea where these component needs to go. So whether you use SolidWorks PCB or all team designer, it's 3D aware, meaning that we can switch to a 3D view where it gives you that realistic view of the board. This is a functionality that we have also in our new platform, SolidWorks PCB platform. So what you see, these are a 3D representation of that physical part that exists on the PCB. We accept with a collaboration technology, the mechanical can provide native SolidWorks model. So in all team designer right now, what you do, people just attach step. We know step five tends to be huge. It might take like 40 minutes to load a PCB because of all of these steps that are, you know, attached to the footprint to represent the 3D. So what we do now with the collaboration, you can actually attach embed solid native solid parts. So parasolid or SLDPRT parts or even step five. So I have these as a solid part. So I've attached them to my footprints as a solid model. I do not know where they need to go. So I'm going to go ahead and again inform my mechanical place two connectors. Okay, immediate notification. Once this gets posted, if I switch to my SolidWorks environment, immediate notification comes in. So you will see, as a mechanical I'm working, I get the notification the moment the assembly falls out of sync with the PCB. So again, I don't see, I don't have surprises. I don't have to wait for a step. I don't have to manipulate as an electronic design. I have to manipulate that data, save it as a step so they, the mechanical can import. Look at this. I'm going to, I know there are components. It gives me that flashing, you know, animation of the new components. I'm going to go ahead and just check them all. You have the option to check, accept, or reject any changes. I'm just going to accept those all now. And then look at this. These files comes in into my mechanical domain as if they were created in SOLIDWORKS. It's not, excuse my term, a dump file. It's not step. It has intelligence. The board outline represented as a sketch and it's linked to the PCB. Each of those components in my domain is a solid model. I don't lose my fidelity parts. These are the models that I work with. I can check them to PDM. It's my own workflow. I'm not compromising my workflow. Now, also because, again, of the SOLIDWORKS associativity, if I go and look at my main assembly, it will update my main assembly so I can see these components came into my main assembly. So what I'm going to do, I know with where those parts need to go. So I'm going to go ahead and simply move with a triad. Let me pick this component here. Side, they're fixed right now. It's like a oh, that's right, yes. They come, I think they come and fix and yeah, okay, perfect. So now let's say I want to, oops. Yep, bring this guy here. And I am going to 
rotate. Okay, this guy here also I'm going to float and I'm going to move. There are settings too that will make this component made it to the board immediately. This is settings that we can set up in our mechanical platform that we can fix the board, fix the components to the board so they're automatically made it so I'm not moving them on the z-axis because we still don't have an interpretation. To, PCB is a 2D dimension. So we don't interpret the z-axis, so that's why just, you know, things cannot be placed on the z. Mechanical made the changes. They log these down. So they know that this is where this component needs to be. Again, what we do right now, another DXF or another step, some sort of, you know, interchange. Nope. We are going to use our collaboration technology. And look at this. We're speaking the same language now because I can see the reference designator appended at the end. This is a simple board. This is only two parts. But imagine, I'm going to bring the complete collaborated board at the end. And I'm going to show you all the feature tree and components. When you, if you remove one connector out of like 25, how would I know? Very easy. You can pull this, adjust, and you can see all reference designators. So I can go straight to that component I, I moved. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to inform back, hello, positioned J1 and J2, because we can finally speak, speak the same language. I know where J1 and J2 are. Again, and I'm sorry, what was his name? Ma yes, that's the drum roll for you, because I'm going to show you, yes, <laughs> here. I love to show it in the 3D view of All Team Designer. I'm working and I get a notification. Okay, I want to see, I don't want to accept them blindly. I want to see what the mechanical is proposing. If I click and highlight on the change, I get an animated view of the newly proposed location. I click on J1, I can see also an animated view of it. Can I reject? Absolutely. If you don't accept and you just push back and say, sorry, nope, and you guys can play a game. But it's like, you better accept. I'm going to go ahead and accept these changes. Bam. I am synchronized with my mechanical team. I did not have to rely. I can run. I talked to show a couple of my clients, big clients. Too. I said, how long would it? It's like, Angie, we would have just printing the drawing right now. That's the time it would take us. The time you've placed the outline, you've placed a couple of components, you communicate, I'm even taking my time as I'm explaining through this entire process. But they literally said we would just be getting the email, reading the email, and simply printing the drawing to start drawing it in our own tool. Do you guys use configurations? Not try I'm to. Part, no, it depends on the budget. OK. So, Configuration, the equivalent to that in the PCB is a variant. So we do this a lot in the PCB, where um, we design the baseboard, and then not sometimes for the application or the customer, we might have different stuffing options or different values. For example, uh, Bluetooth technology. Where I came from, the medical, some because of, you know, the, the geographical location, some people won't allow Bluetooth. We still have the same baseboard, but it's either I'm going to populate the components for Bluetooth or not. So we might have, or maybe a memory size. Sometimes it's the same chip, but it, it's 128, 256, what, you know, it, but it's the same footprint, but it can be a different component, but it uses the same footprint. This is called a variant. It's a little bit different than how, come because when I first heard of Conf, I'm like, it, it can be all of these different crazy things. I'm like, no, for us, there are only two things. The board has to be the same fit form, not the function necessarily, because that's the whole point. It's the stuffing of the component that can change the function of the board. But it's the same Gerber's, the same PCB, it's the stuffing option. We support that right now. So let me do this. Back to the all team designer. I am going to place a component here. So let me look at my entire. So let's go ahead and I'm going to place this chip here. And I'm going to create a variant. So I'm going to update the PCB again so that 
Okay, perfect. Go back to my 2D mode. Okay, so here's the new component that I just added. And I can add a color. I just want to make a very quick illustration of how we support variances. So in the in All Team Designer, I'm going to go ahead and create a variant. So I'm going to call it Europe, for example. Europe. And for that variant, that component that I just placed, U1, is not going to be populated. So it's not going to be stuffed or, you know, soldered down to the board. The footprint, you know, it's, oops, it's not going to be non-fitted. So what happens is that if I switch to my variant, that component, you see the, the 3D models disappear. It means that it's not going to be installed or stuffed or soldered down to the board. So the footprint does not exist. The, the footprint exists, but the physical part does not exist. So how to communicate that design intent to the mechanical? Sometimes, like I said, this is a teeny tiny part, but maybe it's an LCD or maybe something that will have an impact on how the enclosure looks like or openings. You know, you create different enclosure for different, you know, connectors, whether they're, you know, exposed, they, they're in or they're not popular. So whatever you guys decide. So what we're going to do, I am going to push and inform that I added the U1 and a configuration, Europe configuration. Where U1 is not installed. Okay, so back to the SolidWorks environment. Yes. Do you get an email notification as well? Or We're working, no. That's part of post-2018, something that we are working on right now for 2019 to provide a workflow for that collaboration. So right now, you will get only notification through the panel, but no other notification um, via email unless you just send an email. So now I'm going to go ahead and I see the changes. I'm going to go ahead and just check them all to bring those changes right now to the mechanical side. Okay, that's fine. I have it into my... Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So my component, my part came here. And then if I switch to my configuration, I see the default where I expect all the components to be installed. But if I switch to the Europe configuration, notice the component disappears. So now I'm managing. I don't have to create different assemblies for each PCB variant to represent the different configuration. Everything in one file. And I know if they change it, they remove it, they add, they install, whatever you guys, the mechanical now can reposition that component, push back this and communicate this back over to the, electro, to the electrical team and back, back and forth. So the entire, anything with respect to the board outline, to component reposition, to mounting holes, all of this can be communicated, variants, all of this can be communicated through the collaboration technology. Currently not, for a couple of reasons. We do have a pair solid export. So from the PCB domain, you can go ahead and extract or um, export uh, each layer as a pair solid for the copper representation and then bring those into the piece, into the assembly and superimpose it. And then you will get the copper and plus you have that live dynamic link to the PCB. We haven't done it. We have not done two things, copper or silk screen. First of all, copper tend to tax the mechanical side tremendously. What I mean by that, it's a lot of information. It gets modeled. Each single track will be modeled as an entity, and then the mechanical say, forget it. You know, I, 
it's it's ridiculous i'm i'm not gonna just sit here wait for an hour for my board to load with copper so what we're doing 2019 we're thinking about the way we're gonna include copper and silk screen in 2019 through collaboration but we're thinking about incorporating this information as options by layer or by sections so it will not tax the mechanical environment same with the silk screen right now it can be done exported also as a decal we're thinking about post 2018 which is something that you guys will see in 2019 next year is that we will bring those silk screen as a decal into the mechanical environment but right now it's not you just have to export those as parasolid again it's the one export that we have to do just to bring the copper information for now but definitely we're considering and we're thinking on the way to best accommodate this option post 2018. Yes, that's right. Absolutely. Uh, vias will come in. So no, vias will not come in because this is part of the car. So all of anything that would be uh, with respect uh, to via, uh, plating, um, solder, all of this will come across. So that's definitely, that was the one thing I've seen it when we were talking even about parasolid and we bring it, the amount of information that gets in is, is very, very big. So we don't want to just provide something. And then when we talk to people, they say, oh, maybe just a couple of layers, maybe not all. So we're like, okay, let's take that step back. Do we want to bring all copper or maybe we want to give an option to bring what they want? So definitely something that you will see in 2019. Perfect. So let's go back on oh, my PowerPoint. Unfortunately, I had to. So I'll let play a very quick video showing now that you've seen. Oh, again, I have to like do the <laughs> trick again. Sorry, Lars. I just perfect. Okay, yeah, I didn't play the video yet, okay. thank you. So now that I showed the collaboration technology, what I'm gonna do, I talked about, you know, this is how we do it in the electrical side and, you know, versus a literally click of a button. I took the time to capture a video side by side on the collaboration and you can see the timing it takes to bring the board outline versus the timing that it, as an electrical design, the time it takes me to redefine, to bring, and again, not taking in consideration the time I received my email, printing that, you know, looking at the DXF, making sure that it's the right one, and also create, you save, saving it in my environment. So let's go ahead and click. I'm going to play the video. And I've been doing this for 12 years. So I'm using shortcut keys. I know my commands. So this is you and yeah. Had to place dimensions because I didn't know if they were coming in with the right scaling. Versus, it was just a click. I have a quick question. Do we have this connector tool? You can have it definitely because you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have. I talked. I've done um, some, you know, other uh, webinar and seminars for um, your VAR and a couple of team members. They were available and they were really interested. They were more on on the electronic side and they've seen this, but I do not know what you guys currently possess um, and something that they were interested in getting, you know, licenses for the collaboration. So that is what we have today. It's uh, like this. Yes. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Just the first yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. You are welcome. <laughs> yeah, it went by so quick, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll share, I'll share all the PowerPoint. Yes, that's, that's right. That is, and I, I'm like, it's, when I recorded this and I was editing and people were like, are you serious? I'm like, I wish I can make it long, but there was nothing really that I can make long. It is that yeah. click of a button that brings it. I don't have to worry about dimension. I don't have to worry about, or the origin will come from the mechanical too. So I can see their origin. I did not have to worry about any of this, which that's what I'm doing right here. That's part of my, you know, the workflow that I do on the electrical side. So what we're trying to do here, is that is that good? We're good to move on? Okay, perfect. So what we're doing is that, like I said, we solid works penetrating this. You've heard a lot of big companies are consolidating, right? And like Siemens bought, you know, uh, mentor like the PCB segment. We partner with Altium. So there is definitely we're going on the right track. We want to break that wall. We don't want to work at the end of the day everybody look at this we're small teams but we're one big team so that's what we're trying to help we're we we're here to collect feedback i am here because i've done this for i suffered from this that's why i joined solidworks i said i want to help the community i i spend hours i'm like i always used to tell my boss my circuit design works i'm like you cannot judge me i'm like when it comes, it's the only time that I would be sitting in the lab freaking out is when I know the board is coming and I have to make sure that it fits in. That's the only time that I know if my PCB fits inside the enclosure. When I have the board and I have the PCB, there was no, I can check it 10 times and I always go by like, you know, measure 20 times and cut once. I do that. I measure 50 times. But again, I can miss something so simple. It's like, Oh, mechanical just decided to add this post with a mounting hole that I didn't take in consideration in my design. Bam, spin. I can't. How am I going to drill my PCB? Absolutely not. I've done it too where I had two components on top of each other. <laughs> not by design. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, how did I do that, Inji? I'm like, wow, because I don't have the right tools to check for that. Mechanical, if I were to send this over to the mechanical immediately, running their collision and interference checking in SOLIDWORKS, it would have identified as an error. You can't have that. But I'm like, electronically, the paths are not interfering, but because I didn't have the 3D, it did not, even if, it, if I had the 3D body, I could have just missed it because my design rule, unless I set up the design rule and make it check for that, I could have still easily missed it. But electronically, the paths were not shorted but the bodies were overlapping. It's two components on top of each other. And I'm like, ah, oh, again, another spin. So, but circuit works great, but small things that it's usually, and you know what? We have 10 eyes reviewing this PCV. I have 10 eyes reviewing the schema and we still can miss it. So we need the tool to help us get, to be our safety net. I'm like, I can, can be me, and I have a couple of people also be mine. But at the end of the day, we have to have the tool that will break the barriers and to do the job that we cannot do as much as we have our experience, you know, well-seasoned people, you know, in this room. They know what they're doing, but we need the tool. So that's what SolidWorks and Altium, design, Altium has been doing, and that's what we continue doing, is really breaking the, the wall and bringing together the different silos. So again, do we try to save time and money? I can stand here and say, you can tell me, Inji, what do you know about our stuff? What do you know about our process? You're right, I know nothing about your process. I know nothing about your schedule, but I think I always say, people try to say, we try to let you get to market quickly. Companies your size. We know money is not an issue. 
You guys paved the road, you know, for others. It's only going to be a matter of time for the competition to reach up to you. But how you guys are different is sustain, sustaining your product. You were in the Bay Area. We know companies, they, you know, raise money and then they die within a year because they could not sustain it. Coming from the medical industry, everybody has a tracking device. It was crazy when I went to Medica, the biggest convention for medical devices. Everybody. I'm like, wow. Next year, half of those were gone. They couldn't, they couldn't be. So it's like, you know what? Yes, you can have a destructive technology, but then if you can't sustain it and you cannot have the right tools and process, you're going to die. So that's what we're focusing on. That's why I'm here. I'm like, we're going to offer something that it's going to give you some of your time back to be innovative and not to worry about this workflow and the errors that it's caused because of miscommunication and the wall and the teams. Let's take this aside. Let's give you the time to be creative and be innovative and do what you do best. So that's really my thing about time. And, you know, like I said, I'm not here to judge on anything. I'm just here to help, you know, get you from point A and to point B and to sustain your work. Improve accuracy. Absolutely. I think with what I showed today, you guys can already think there's a lot of things that you do manually right now that you can just, you know, cross off your list saying, you know what, this will be taken care of by the tool. And the tool will do a very good job because it's a software, it's a program. It will do the job every time. The same outcome will be correct every single time. You don't have uncertainties. You don't have, you know, unexpected results. You do the right process, it's going to work every single time. Less time and effort. One can debate, is it less time and effort? Again, this has been released last year. So when Altium and SolidWorks released it, Altium came with something, but really 2016 when SolidWorks took over, by the way, that's the SolidWorks product. So even though that I keep saying it's an Altium partnership, but it is a SolidWorks product. It's a SolidWorks brand. Altium is our R&D for the electronic piece. So that's how the partnership is really happening, but it is a product we define how this product will look like over the years. So less time and effort for what we have right now. Yes, there's still some stuff, you know, that, you, you know, there's best practices. There's not really much training because you saw pretty much what you've seen today, that's your training. That's it. There's not really much into it. There are, yeah, if I need to set up variances, copper stuff. Really, by 2019, you guys, I say from 2017 to 18, it was a big leap. 2019, we're going to have a really, really cool, bringing a lot of, it's about, it would have been about two years, collecting a lot of feedback, and that's what I do. I go out and talk to what they want and pretty much bring this back to R&D. I have a call, not a call, I have three times a day a call with product manager and every week with oh, it's the time you guys want anything bring it to my attention I will take your feedback this is like I said we're doing the same job as what you guys do we're paving the road we're paving that technology we're trying to you know change the way people are doing things to the better reduce errors absolutely because again I am not Manipulating the moment, for me, I freak out the moment I start manipulating. I'm like, ah, I just get this strange, right? I'm like, saving as a file. The moment you save something out of its original format, you do not know really what happens behind it. So that's why I'm like, did I lose something? Like I said, the easiest, the, the simplest example is units. DXF doesn't bring units. I have no idea what the, the unit is. Better communication. I believe it's a much better communication as of seeing who did what and when. Every single user, your manager can come in and see tracking all the changes between electrical and mechanical, who did what and when, the sign off, oh, I did not receive, why, did, oh, nobody actually, yeah, posted the new board outline changes. So tracking change, not to put anybody pointing fingers, but we, we don't have a means. Like I said, if I take Gmail today out of your daily activities. You guys will be calling each other. The phones will be ringing off the hook. So we believe that we're doing 
what we can best, you know, to help you do the job. This is a quote from one of our customers. He said, a process that took 30 minutes or more can now con consistently be done in three minutes or less. I showed the video, it was actually 34 seconds. So that's, but for him, again, looking at importing a DXF, that's, yeah, for considering the time it took him, 30 minutes, you can see the delta between those two. Question. Yes. Licensing yes. So one license would support uh, maybe like one station of SolidWorks and then one station of Altium? From the SolidWorks side is open. There are no restriction on the number of on the, it's on the electronic side. Okay. Okay. So we do have we promote for both. We have the standalone and a network for you know your size. Absolutely, a network license would be better. I'm like a, depends on how many how many how many people. Yeah, standalone is just you know on a standalone. Just use it and it stays with you. But a network. Uh, so, but on the mechanical side, there are no restriction. Even if it's a network one. Two network license restrictions that is on the electrical side. Yes. Uh, probably. No, yeah, absolutely. So, number one, I was hoping you could say a few words about um, the point. Yes. You mentioned you could make this all over a small group. That's, That's right. That part. Yep. And number two, what's the story on plug circuit? Excellent. Excellent, excellent question. So, the component. Uh, yes. So, the first question was about component creation so how to get the component from the electrical to the mechanical side so we're going to talk about this as part of the second part which is component research and creation so i'm going to cover that the second question is uh, not questions because we don't have an answer but uh, the flex circuit so the first first one i'm going to show illustrate that the second one the flex the collaboration does not support flex design it will flatten the flex so um, why? Because there is so much behind it. There are companies, when we talk to our SolidWorks, we met, this is, I'm part of SolidWorks, so I represent SolidWorks. We talk to our community, they say, oh, we use sheet metal. OK, interesting. So I'm like, coming from the electrical side, I've always used my PCB to do my flex search. But hearing it, I'm like, oh, okay, sheet metal. Then now we have Altium. They have the flex configuration. So who's going to do I'm like, is SolidWorks will take off this, the lead on that? Because it can be done on the sheet metal, so it's best can be represented. And then through the collaboration, so it's a totally created and configured from the SolidWorks side. Or since it's already in Altium and people set up the layer stack, would the next logical step would be to at least support some of the layer stack and some of the bending that you know created on the electronic side and bring it something that we're currently our you know R and are thinking on how it's best. So, but right now there's no support. It just flatten your flex. All team has this capability to for bending, but if you look at the capabilities in comparison to when you design a flex, the bending, the radius, the tolerances, the precision, it's not what, what you know, also provides. We need something that is going to be, you know, up to the community, their expectations. So that's why we're holding off until we have a better, you know, solution. For it. Oh, I'm sorry. Is people, uh, this, is it far? Oh, <laughs> okay, perfect. Sorry. Um, very good. So let's see. So I will, my next bubble is we're talking about the platform. So um, first of all, the mechanical part is done. So I'm switching gears now. And part of the second half, I have about 45 minutes. I want to be mindful of everybody's time. So um, I'm going to talk all purely electronics right now. So you're more than welcome to stay to see what are the solution. But Lars, I, I mentioned that in the email, the first half is highly recommended to have the mechanical to see the collaboration. And then now it's going to be purely the electronic platform. So what we offer. So part of partnering with Altium 
is that we have our own platform as well. So now we have SolidWorks PCB. The first technology that I mentioned, it's called the SolidWorks PCB connector. That technology is available to all team designer to collaborate to the SolidWorks mechanical. The second solution that we offer, we said we want to have our own PCB platform. So what we have today, we bridge that gap between the electrical engineers and we created and I I'm, I'm, have to be careful with the work created because we did not really create. We leverage what Altium has been doing very good over the past 28 years, and we have SolidWorks PCB. SolidWorks PCB, for those who have an Altium background, it is Altium Designer. The engine, the core, I call it, it's an Altium DNA. The, the only, the, and I'm going to pull the platform right now, I'm going to give the demonstration about SOLIDWORKS PCB, but you'll see that SOLIDWORKS PCB is all team designer. We open all team native files. I don't export any of the all team designer files. I open the all team designer files and they're compatible. SOLIDWORKS PCB or all team designer, they're both compatible with each other. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to switch. I made the presentation with um, for the collaboration piece, I was showing um, here. Thank you. So this is the All Team Designer platform. So you see that they have, maybe it's just truncated, it has the menus and the submenus, has the projects panel, the collaboration technology, SolidWorks PCB. We change menus to ribbons. So it's much easier, much simpler. I call it, we give it a facelift. <laughs> pretty much what we did. We removed all those um, bulky menus and we went to a nice ribbons, but the environment, the platform is identical to all team designer. For all team designer users, I tell them it feels when you use or the first time you look at SolidWorks PCB, it feels like you stepped away two weeks from all team designer and came back to it. That's exactly how it's like, oh my gosh, this is it is the platform. We have not changed any of the core functionalities of all team designer. We've removed things by design. So for example, part of that is flex. We've removed out of SOLIDWORKS PCB. We might bring some of it, but not all. We're again thinking down the road on how we're going to handle flex. Big thing in 2019 is on our highest priorities list is PDM integration of the electrical data. So I'm talking about, right now we can take the all team designer or SOLIDWORKS PCB files and we can check them into PDM. But we're talking about a true integration of PDM into the SOLIDWORKS PCB environment. I'm not talking about all team. I do not know what they have for the roadmap, but right now the focus is on SOLIDWORKS PCB. So our SOLIDWORKS PCB platform, we talked about component, one of those steps throughout the PCB workflow. And I'm sorry, your name? Ed. Ed asked about the component, you know, component uh, creation and placement of those parts and the electrical and passing it over to the mechanical. So in SOLIDWORKS PCB, we offer over half a million parts ready for you to use. So these are available at your fingertips. They're integrated library, meaning that we have a schematic symbol with the PCB representation, physical representation, with some 3D information that you can just go and download and use the part. In addition to that, when we look at the component creation, there are the two stages. There are the building the part and then sourcing and procuring the part and then the mechanical. So I'm not going to talk about mechan bring mechanical later, but it's part of the component creation. But for the electronic designer, we want to create a part. In 2018, we have now the symbol wizard and IPC footprint wizard. So these are new features that we brought from all team designer, new in 2018. So in the library, we have the concept of a library creation. And I know for mechanical, it's like, you guys have so many libraries. I'm like, unfortunately, we do. <laughs> so we have the symbol library. That's the symbol, schematic symbol representation, where it possesses all the parameters or the metadata to drive the bill of material. And then the footprint is a PCB library where it just keeps the footprint, you know, the physical representation of that symbol in addition to the 3D. 
So what we have here, I'm going to go ahead and open up my MyAmo to look at the libraries very quickly. So here, that's a representation of... Okay, perfect. Uh, we have dedicated, you know, editing and menus for when you look at a symbol. So again, these are all my components the schematic symbol representation for, you know, capacitor, resistors, connectors. So these are graphical elements and then you have the pins and then what we will do, we also have. And the part here, this component here, uh, when we look at the properties of the part, this is where we define all the metadata. So what I mean by that, all the parameters to drive the bill of material, value, pricing, manufacturer, availability, part number, supplier, all of this good, you know, current rating, whatever you guys have, internal part number, anything that you guys define as part of your uh, bill of material, uh, bill of material for procurement and sourcing. So new, as I mentioned, in 2018, SOLIDWORKS PCB 2018, we have the symbol wizard. It will allow you to create the symbol very quickly, very efficiently. You can copy from an Excel spreadsheet and paste directly. That's what with our paste, smart paste capabilities that, oops, sorry, not, not in here, smart paste capabilities that we can paste directly from an, a, a spreadsheet with all pins information to create the symbol in the library. Also new in 2018, we can link to an existing database. For example, a lot of companies, they have um, databases where they have parameters that these parameters, the component information, such as the pricing, value, part number, supplier, all of these are being driven from their approved vendor where they keep as part of their database. Now we can have the hooks to that internal database and extract this information and pull it directly from your internal database. So that's what we call the DB link file that we currently support with 2018 as well. So once we have the schematic representation, we also have the library, the PCB library. So let me go ahead and pull the PCB library. So here again, the dedicated panel for the PCB library that will allow me to add and preview all of the components that I created. With 2018, we do have the IPC footprint wizard complying to the IPC standard. So very efficient. I love this tool. This tool is amazing. It allows you to create any Footprint, pretty much these are all the different types that we currently support and we will usually add to those, but these are, I think it's a pretty good list. You walk through the wizard and pretty much with the data sheet, you input all the data and it will create the footprint for you. So what usually used to take me hours, it can take me minutes today. The 3D for at the 3D information. So with the connect, if you have Altium Designer with a connector license or with SolidWorks PCB, because with our SolidWorks PCB platform, the SolidWorks connector technology is already integrated as part of the platform. You don't need to add to purchase additional license for the collaboration. So that's the big difference between Altium Designer is that you have to buy the SOLIDWORKS PCB connector add-in, but for SOLIDWORKS PCB is already integrated inside the platform. So you can collaborate to the mechanical users. And it also comes as a standalone and network license. So what you see here is this is a 3D representation of the part. So what we usually do is placing a 3D body. What we get, we embed a 3D model. So I can go and directly embed and browse from their PDM library, all the mechanical libraries. If I know if I have access to the PDM library where they keep their mechanical parts, I can go ahead and embed the native SLD part or the Parasolid file. That's how we would create the, we embed the 3D information that becomes available to the mechanical engineer. That's right. The wizard will allow you to do that. So as you walk through the wizard, you can go ahead and define and you can map and link the 3D information. But for all older parts where you don't have a 3D part, you can just go ahead and place that 3D body and then embed the model. Okay. So it's, it's the, 
It will create a dumb shape, some geometry with height. But if you need that intricate connector, like for, this is an intricate part. This is not just a body, a geometry with some height. That's what the wizard will do. Based off the dimension you give, it's going to create, you know, it's going to prompt you what's the height that you want. And you put like 10 mil, right, or something. So it's just a rectangular geometry with some height. But if you want to add intricate, you know, details, you can go ahead and embed the, that that's a manual step that you'll have to do yeah for for these intricate details of your components but like I said with that because step file tends to get really huge we now allow you to embed directly solid part and and pair solid files perfect so this is the part of so once the model is created so once the PCB and you see how the PCB footprint well, you don't have to have another PCB lib 3D library. So I don't have to manage a mechanical library. All I do is within the PCB library, I add the 3D information. So it, it travels with my footprint. So what I do now as part to complete that for this connector here, I go to my schematic library. And what I will do is I will embed the footprint or add the footprint to my schematic symbols. So here I have, when I create my schematic, I place that schematic symbol. It already has the footprint model. So when I update, when I bring my engineering change order to the PCB with my net list and components, that footprint with the model are going to be available immediately in the PCB and then I collaborate that to with the mechanical. That's part of our workflow. So, and it's identical to the Altium Designer workflow. So that's part one, one thing. So we say, okay, perfect. We have the symbol. You say that we have over half a million parts that we can use. We have the wizard. This is great. But NG, how can I add all of these parameters? Now I have all of these components, uh, sorry, all of these metadata, you know, to just get a preliminary bill of material to our procurement so they can source the, the you know, they can start do their sourcing. So we have supplier link. So again, we have access to all of these suppliers. Again, new in 2018, SolidWorks PCB 2018, we've inherited the entire SIVA background technology from Altium. So now you can see we have access to all of these different suppliers. In addition to that, different geographical location and currencies too. So you can run your bill of material. So if you're a supplier in China, you can go ahead and, you know, get the supplier pricing and availability based on the supplier from China when you run your bill of material. So what's that supplier link? Um, different, if not better than all team designer, in my opinion, we have the search capability. So we have it in SolidWorks, but we do not have it in Altium Designer. So what we do is, at, uh, yeah, it shows on the screen here, you guys can see it. So all the way at the top right corner, I can search for any command. For those who come from Altium Designer, it becomes very easy because I know all of these commands by heart in Altium. I can simply type them in here and they will come, you know, they will take me directly to that command. So I don't have to look for it. So that's one key when I said we literally just leverage their entire, you know, uh, technology and use that for what makes sense to our community. So I want to use the supplier, supplier search. I'm looking for that Molex. I can put in just Molex, but of course it's going to give me tons of parts. I can put a part number that I know and simply hit the search button. You will get immediate. It's working. The engine is connected to all of these active supplier and it will provide you a list of all of these available suppliers and who possesses the part. We have access to C here. If I go ahead and look, I can go ahead. I'm sure you guys have to go with lead free and Rojas compliant for sure. So what I can do, I can make sure that these are enabled. I can look at all of these 
different parameters that I would like to display if uh, you, if voltage ra rating is important as a key, you know, design element and material, and all of these parameters that you can choose from. Right now, I care about availability and pricing, so that's what I see here. I can sort by unit price. I can sort by, you know, availability. It's really up to you. I'm going to sort by unit price, and then here, I can see that it's offered by the GKey. Not only that, I get all of the electrical characteristics, the PDF, which is access to the data sheet. I don't need to leave the tool to get access to all of this information. I can do it just within the tool immediately. So you say, perfect. This is, can I add it? Yep. Guess what? You like the supplier. I'm going to go ahead. That's the supplier I want. Oops, add, let me hold. Fire. Do it. Let me sort by unit price. It's in available immediately. I'm going to go ahead and add, okay, the supplier. Okay. Ah, sorry. Okay, perfect. Here on the right-click menu, I'm going to go ahead. Do I want to add the supplier link? I want to add the supplier and all of these parts. So supplier link, it means it's only going to add the supplier and supplier part number. But if I want to bring all of these suppliers' information that I see here, all of these parameters and the data sheet, that I'm going to go ahead and choose to add supplier and parameter. Are you guys ready? Can I have some drum rolls? Look at this. Thank you. Look at all of this great information that, again, with a click of a button. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So now I have all of these parameters available to me at my fingertips. So what happens when I place that part into my schematic now? Anybody who has access to that library, they get that part. It has all this information. When I generate my bill of material, I get all of this information. And guess what? I can also have access to the data sheet without leaving. How many times right now I have a folder on the network somewhere where I have all the data sheet and I categorize it by, categorize it by you know, the packaging and then I have the data sheet. Am I looking at the right one? The right? Nope. This is all driven. This is real active data from your supplier. So, that's part of the component creation. So the symbol, now the symbol is available on the schematic. When I update the PCB, the footprint will become available. No more, again, do I have the right footprint? Is the right model attached to it? When I update my PCB through the engineering change order, I'm going to do this very, just very quickly right now to show you. Okay, let me save that sheet. <laughs> Okay, perfect. I'm going to use the engineering change order to update. Let's recompile. So change that to 1000 so I know it's the new part. Very quickly, I'm just making an update here to the PCB so I can show you what we will be receiving. Where's my component? Let me check one place. Sorry, I might have made. Go 
had an update. Okay, perfect. Let me disable my engineering change order. What it does? Moving, changing, modifying. This is really interesting. I don't see my new component. Sorry, let me copy it to one of those sheets. Okay, this is better. Perfect. So what happens? My engineering change order, it compares all of the active schematic document to the target PCB. So it looks for differences between nets, component, parameters, footprint changes, design rules, everything that, that it's a discrepancy or a, or a difference between the schematic and PCB will get, will get listed through the engineering change order. It's not a, an all or nothing. You have an option or the, the choice to either update everything from the schematic to the PCB or just, you know, disable all and just look at, you know, a couple of changes. I want to just bring that new connector that I just added right now. So here's the new connector. This is the completed MIMO board and you guys will see all of this has been nicely represented and I've pushed this with the collaboration over to the mechanical team and it came in I will open it in a moment here but that's the new component you see it came in with the footprint the representation of the 3d it's associated to the schematic everything is nicely synchronized not only in the electronic domain but also to the mechanical teams so that is the component creation, so with the half a million part, with the wizard, DB link, with the supplier information, pretty much where we covered all of the different aspects of your component creation. I hope so, Ed. Excellent. Thank you. So next in my, I'm not going to switch back to the PowerPoint because I know it will take it away. So what we look very quickly is your the, the schematic design. So what everybody would expect out of their PCB tool. A nice, comprehensive, schematic tool. Besides the PCB, also the schematic capabilities. Uh, we support flat and hierarchical design. What you guys see here, this is a hierarchy. So I started with the top level. Each of those blocks, some people come from ORCAD. I use ORCAD in the past, and what I used to do is I do my block diagram, right? This is like the high-level diagram log diagram. I used to do it in Visio and then bring it as an image. It has no reference to the schematic sheets. I, if I make a change, I have to go back to Visio and redo it and bring it again and I import it as an image. It was not intelligent. But in SolidWorks PCB, that's an intelligent blog that represents the child sheet underneath it. So, for example, if I want to look at my power page, I control double click, it will dive and take me straight to my power sheet. So I can have that top level sheet can be a true representation with the different blocks, you know, in my design. I can have several people working on the same project because, for example, I'm working on the power supply, you know, power supply and the uh, EMG inputs. I can have another person working on the processor page. So they will have a schematic sheet. Each, you know, designer will create a schematic sheet and they will work on it and then we can check it back all in. So we allow for, you know, multiple engineers to work on the same project. That's the representation of the schematic. Again, as I mentioned, everything that you would expect, wiring tools, the graphical, electrical, uh, you know, objects, we also, what we, re, what we have in the schematic that it's really great, that we support design rules in the schematic. So what I mean by that, your constraints that will be, will, will, can be defined in the PCB can all be defined in the schematic. Sometimes electrical designers are not necessarily the PCB layout. So the electrical designer will need to set up some constraint with regards to differential pairs or high speed or, you know, critical nets. They can go ahead and define those design rules in the schematic and pass those over to the PCB layout. 
also we support variants. This is something that I talked earlier about. So if we have multiple, you know, representation of the same bare board as uh, in, in terms of form fit but different function, we can go ahead and set up a variance and it allows for fitted versus non-fitted components and also for different component values. So if I go uh, over to the project, I can go ahead and I can show you one very quickly here. I'm going to create one, test one. Maybe I have test one. Okay, so let's call it test two. Okay, so I did have a test one. Okay, perfect. I'm going to, um, we you know, locate BT1 and I'm going to go ahead and change that to an unfitted part for test two variant. I can use my command to jump to that component and that was BT1 and simply by type it, it will take me straight to that component in the schematic. So right now I'm looking at my default variant where that component should be installed. So switching to that variant test 2, I can see now that this is it's going to have a cross. I can go ahead and add the text DNI for do not populate or DP or whatever nomenclature that you guys use for do not populate this part. And this will show in the schematic prints, PDF prints, you know, your assembly. All of these are being driven from the one file. I don't have to manage multiple files for the PCB. It's also going to come as a different variance. For the mechanical, they also see it as a configuration. So now that's what I was talking earlier about. It's that synchronization. That's, you know, bringing or bridging the gap between the different disciplines, not just I'm working in my own domain and I don't care about the rest. Um, any specifics, you know, if people have questions with regards to what they expect out of the schematic? Yes. Um, how would you properly package all of this together? Let's say just submit. Excellent. That's my last part, deliverables. Yes, I'm going to, the question was how to package all of this and send it to manufacturers. So um, my answer is I'm going to cover that next. I have about five more minutes and I will get to that. So it's part of the last step in that PCB development cycle, which is deliverables, and I'm going to show it in a minute. So um, I'm walking through the traditional PCB development cycle, which is from the schematic and the component and then place starting your schematic. Now the schematic is done. By the way, your schematic doesn't have to be completed in order to communicate between the schematic and the PCB. At any moment and any time, I can go ahead and update my PCB. And this is done through the engineering change order. This is where I get a complete list of the changes between the schematic and PCB. So I can make necessary changes, 20%, 50%, 90%. At any time, you can run that differences engines and update the PCB. The problem that it, how all team was so different from all the other competition is that we have that unified platform. And this is something that we said when we had that partner, like we don't want to lose that unified platform because that's key to, you know, bring the engine, the electrical engineers together. ORICAD has its own schematic capture, then you will have to export the net list and you have to export the foot, the decals and then bring it over to the PCB and then you import again, snapshot or snap, uh, snap time of the moment of the design. This is not the case with PCB. At any time, any moment, you have your engineering change order at your fingertips. So PCB environment, so let me go ahead and swap to the PCB. That is the completed PCB. So let me switch to the 2D mode first. So um, this is your com the completed PCB of the Mayamo project that, we, that Vince was wearing. That's the PCB, the, the brain of that medical device. Uh, 32, I'm going to start with layers because that's what people ask, how many layers? So 32 signal layers, 16 internal planes, and 32 mechanical layers. All the layer is configured through a layer stack that you can import, you can save, you can use for future designs. Thickness, dielectric material are all plugged in in there, also the pullback from your signal internal planes. I think that's plenty of like this is also the same exact layer stack that Altium offers. We do support 
blind and buried vias. So if I go to my drill pair, this is where I configure blind and buried vias. We also support all the different laser hits for your pads. So from punch, mechanical, plasma, and la uh, laser drill. And that will also become available in the NC drill. All of the this constraint that this is now becoming a part of your you know, PCB workflow, I cannot start routing a signal without having a constraint from whether it's impedance controlled or with constraint, clearance constraint, you know, differential pairs, net length, all of these great stuff, all configured through the design rule, check, the design rule uh, constraint. Design rule, we have 10 different categories. And again, I'm not going to go through these. They're pretty much everything that you would expect we can save the design rules and we can export the design rules and, and use them for future designs. The same file can also be extracted from all team designer. Like I said, we're all team native files. So if you have layer stack configuration, you have design rules, you have uh, setup layout configuration, all of these files can be exported from all team and used within SOLIDWORKS PCB. We understand all of this and back, back and forth. So you will not be losing any of your uh, data integrity. So are, are there, yeah, I know you just said that it's... Flex is the one, is... So Flex is one exception, or yes. are there any other caveats? Absolutely. There are, okay, I can say this, given that I worked for Altium and I've used it for 12 years, I know the platform inside out. I can sit with you and I can list everything that we do not have. Would that be applicable to you? Sometimes you say, oh, I wasn't even aware of this. There are absolutely key differences. And for a reason, Altium is after the high-speed, high-density board. We're more focusing on the collaboration end. So besides the big things, I can just you know, tell you that we do not have right now within our tool. We do not have the flex design, flex configuration in SOLIDWORKS PCB. We do not have uh, the Altium vault. We do have access to that half a million part that I was talking about. These are all being dumped from the vault, but we provide them over an FTP where you can go ahead and download the component as needed. So we don't have the, we don't possess the Altium vault um, that will allow or the component, just the component vault, because part of our PCB services technology, which I talked earlier about for collaboration, it uses the Altium vault, but we don't possess the component vault. So flex design, component vault, we do not have a dynamic uh, match length rule. So Altium has, that's another thing because people talk about SI, signal integrity. So when we talk again, signal integrity, it's huge, right? It's like, okay, what are we talking with respect to signal integrity? Like fall and rise time, all of these. Altium has the design rules, but when compared to expedition, they don't, you know, they don't come close. So again, but if we talk at just basic, we don't have a signal integrity tool. We don't have the match length. It can be done manually. Same with the flex design. We don't have the configuration or the automation to allow you to create the flex, but I've, wrote, I've written an application note on how it can be done with SOLIDWORKS PCB. It requires a little bit of manual effort. Same with length, length match. We don't have an, the design rules that will, it has to be manually done, you know, signal by signal. So you can tell that we're not after the high speed, the high density board, you know, for where a lot of our focus right now is to really um, you know, be successful with respect to the MCAD ECAD collaboration. That's our primary goal. Is there anything that you can do with SolidWorks PCB that would create a file that all teams can not deal with? No. N nothing. Right now, um, the only difference, and it's not that it cannot do. First of all, for example, we don't, oh, another one that we don't support and we've been getting a lot of uh, inquiries about is teardrop. We don't have teardrop. So if Altium created a teardrop, would we lose the shape? Because what happens, you can run an automatic way to just teardrop. In PCB, you will have to create it manually, like you will create a custom you know, re region area for that teardrop. If I created the teardrop in Altium and bring it over to the SOLIDWORKS PCB, will I lose it? Absolutely not. You're not going to lose it, but you can't do anything with it because if you want to reconfigure it again, 
then it has to be reconfigured from all team. You can delete it, but you cannot regenerate the automatic teardrop. So any of the data that was first created in, in all team designer that we don't possess, there, the data itself, like tracks, copper, any, anything, it will come across. We will not lose anything. There are a difference in extension. So for, for example, if you look at my screen, let me pull them side by side so you can have a better view of that. If I were to hide, sorry, let me, if I were to hide just the top so you don't see the ribbon, you cannot tell a difference by looking at the pro they're identical. Unlike the same projects panel, the same workspace, the buttons where they are, even we have the check-in for, you know, version control, and we also have the built-in version control, or you can um, connect to an external version control system, everything. But if you look at extension, PRJ PCB is identical. Schematic PCB library are identical. Schematic document are identical. The difference is just the PCB. Why is that? So here, notice that the extension is SWPCB, and then for Altium, it's just PCB doc. Difference is because the SolidWorks PCB has already the collaboration integrated, the collaboration SolidWorks, so we had to identify the difference. If you're working in Altium, you save the file. We import this Altium Designer file, but we understand that we just go and say import Altium and then bring it. Same in Altium Designer, you'll just import a SOLIDWORKS PCB. But the translator does not remove any of your data. It's not a really true translate. It's not like how we translate from a competition tool. It's just differences in extension. It's like as if it's another Altium file, earlier version of an Altium Designer. So the data that comes, you will not lose any of the data integrity. It's just like think of it as an earlier Altium Designer version. That's it. Okay. So put it to the variance in that it is like the, the round trip data conserving. So you start from a SOLIDWORKS PCB, import it into Altium, and then import it back. Do you still have all the collaboration stuff? In you don't need to. If you guys are happy with Altium Designer and you want the collaboration piece, you just add the collaboration piece to SOLIDWORKS. But SOLIDWORKS PCB, as I mentioned, is a standalone. It can, we're not here to displace Altium, but for example, you want a tool that has the collaboration. You know, you want a tool for your uh, new hire. You want a tool for prototyping. And you have Altium Designer for your high-end users, but you want that tool that it understands Altium, that it's there, provide the collaboration all in one then that's what you would use for prototyping, for production, even if you want. So it's like, it's up to you guys on how SOLIDWORKS as its own PCB platform, how is that fitting within your organization? You don't need it, you don't need it. If you say SOLIDWORKS PCB offers everything, I have my team, we don't need everything from all team. That looks good, it's easy to use, it has nice ribbons, it's uh, good for a couple of interns that I'm gonna hire that they're gonna work on a project or e even for me as a designer, that might be the tool that works for you. I just, so the part of this that I want to present the two solutions that we currently have. Like I said, it's not going from SOLIDWORKS PCB to Altium back to Solid. No, it's either going to be you do your design in SOLIDWORKS PCB or you do your design in Altium Designer. Okay. Difference. Yeah. It, you, there's nothing that you just, the same, he will open the project, the project, you got, it's no differences to you or to him. There's really, because for him, he's going to use a PCB document for you to review it. You're just going to import it as a SOLIDWORKS PCB doc. The collaboration is still there. It's intact. There are nothing that you will lose. There's nothing. You can even still see the collaboration, even though that it's a different extension. But you bring it into Altium, and that's a collaborate because we collaborate on the project. And once you bring in the PCB, it understands the history, and then it shows it all to you. So we made it very, very seamless for, for this whole, you know, Altium SOLIDWORKS PCB. Like I said, the only thing is in the file extension for a re and also Altium has 
like I said, they're, they have higher end tool. They have like active signal, right? They have the active, by the way, we do have all the uh, interactive routing tools that they have. So from differential pair and multi-route and so if I go here, let me go ahead and switch back to SolidWorks PCB. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. We're almost done here. So I want to talk about outputs very quickly before we head out. So um, all of this can be generated through a portable file that we call generated outputs. So in here, we're going to go ahead and let me go to my project, generated outputs. You can configure all of your fabrication and manufacture out, out, outputs from bill of materials, schematic prints, fab, you know, IPC netlist. We support IPC 2581. All you need to do, configure your outputs right there, and then you can go ahead and generate this output. The location of those where it needs to go, it's completely up to you. You can configure the, let's say I want my Gerber's. Here, I'm going to configure my Gerbers very quickly. Okay, so I'm going to generate my Gerbers and I'm going to generate my NC drill as well. Perfect, it's configured. I'm going to hit the generate. And the location of those, perfect. So they passed, they're already generated the location of where those goes is set up here under options this is where you can set that can be an internal drive that can be on an FTP side you can set up the location to be anywhere you want and now if I go to that location I can go ahead and see my files will be generated oops my files will be generated in a very um, Not logs, let me right there. So I have my files, I have my Gerbers, and then I have my NC drill um, files in here, right there, and you can just package it and then zip it up. So all one file that you can configure we support templates so you can have your templates you can have your title blocks you can have your Gerbers and you can have create that project so you can use it over and over every time perfect you're welcome so I think should I <laughs> just perfect okay thank you everybody we're just finishing up and uh, it was a pleasure please get your questions over to Lars and we'll talk thank you